Oke Nixikoax, di Taniko Gyail, di Tuktok Gaina. Hello, my name is Kyle. My Blackfoot name is Bear. Uh, that was given to me by my late grandfather, Dan Rees-Moxon Sr. And I come from the Blood Tribe, which is one of the four tribes of the member tribes of the Blackfoot Confederacy. The uh, Prairie Chicken Dance in uh, the Blackfoot culture originates from the Siksigai Nation. And the uh, story goes, uh, there's many uh, stories, but the story that was told by one of the elders of the uh, Blackfoot Confederacy from the Blood Tribe uh, shared their story with me about a uh, Blackfoot hunter uh, that went out there hunting in the spring season and it was in the early morning hours. And as he was walking about, he heard this low thumping sound. He got curious and he followed it. And as he was following it, he came upon these uh, birds, these prairie chickens that were uh, doing this strange ritual, which he didn't know about. But he was hungry and he needed to feed his family. So he grabbed his arrow, his bow and arrow, and he took aim at one of the male birds as they were dancing and shot and killed one of these male birds. And it startled the rest of them. So they all went uh, into hiding into the, into the tall grass. And then he uh, brought the uh, prairie chicken that he killed back to his family. And uh, that's what his family had feasted upon for that evening. And then upon having his uh, nightly smoke and before he went to sleep, he uh, said a prayer, then he had fallen asleep. And in the dreams of our uh, people, sometimes they say that dreams bring us messages. And therefore, in this uh, story, the uh, spirit of the prairie chicken came to this hunter who had taken his life. And when they say the spirit of animals, they come in the form of humans. They sat inside the teepee and he asked, why did you kill me while we're doing the sacred dance of the prairie chicken? And this hunter, this Blackfoot hunter had replied that he did not know that this was the uh, sacred ritual, sacred dance of the prairie chicken. And the prairie chicken had understood knowing that this man had, uh, that the prairie chicken had sacrificed his life so that this hunter, his family can have something to eat. And so he, the prairie chicken spirit had honored this, but he told this uh, Blackfoot hunter that he was uh, going to teach him the songs and the dance of the prairie chicken. And what he was to do was he was to go out there and teach all the men these songs and these dances to honor the prairie chicken. If he didn't do what he was told, this prairie chicken was going to come back and take his life. So it goes to show that the prairie chicken is actually quite uh, powerful in the Blackfoot culture and in the belief in the traditions of our people. So after that, the sacred society that we call the uh, Gitoke society, the sacred prairie chicken that society was created uh, amongst uh, the different societies in Blackfoot uh, culture and part of our uh, Sundance way of life. Uh, it's still in existence here in the Siksigai Nation and the dance that they do is uh, quite different than what we, how we dance out there in the powwow circle where the uh, men would have two rattles and a shawl. Uh, there's four of them and the uh, songs, they don't actually sing but they make the sounds of the prayer chicken while they hit the drum and there's usually four older guys uh, that sit around this drum and the guys have the rattles and they're move, moving around just like the prayer chicken. Now over time as the powwows uh, became outlawed by the uh, Canadian government and a lot of the uh, ceremonies and the rituals uh, through, uh, through the Indian agent that was those laws were enforced, the laws of the land and our people went to residential school. Uh, amongst the Blackfoot people that way of life was not lost. Our people uh, somewhat, lack of a better word, went underground uh, and did it in secret. So those traditions were still kept alive while our people were going through residential school. And then when the residential school, when the laws were kind of, uh, when they kind of took those laws away, our people were able to get out there and to dance and express their way of life through song and dance. In the 1950s, uh, the Begunny Nation Rocket Alberta is the town site. Uh, they were recognized in order to have the first intertribal power, intertribal meaning that all, not only Blackfoot, but other First Nations people can come in and uh, join in with these dances. And so part of that dance was uh, the prairie chicken dance came about and the people had noticed that and they saw that uh, the, these men were dancing like the, like the prairie chicken. 
and they came from the Siksagai Nation and after that the outfit and everything just kind of became elaborate. If you go back to the late 1800s, the chicken dance bustle that we do wear uh, was considered uh, to be called the cruel belt. The original style of the prairie chicken dance, we do not wear the chicken dance bustle. When the Crow people came here in the late 1800s, they brought the gift of the Crow belt with them. Today is known as the bustle that we wear. And in our ceremonies, they presented uh, these four bustles, these four Crow belts to uh, the Ditto Gay Society by doing the dance and through sign language because the language barrier was there. But our people understood the gifts that these were given to the Crow. So then after that, when the uh, prairie chicken dance uh, came about, the individuals, the guys started wearing these crow belts and it just kind of became part of our culture. So it was a gift from the crow people. But the origins of the chicken dance uh, started from the Siksagai Nation. And that is uh, one of many stories uh, about the prairie chicken dance. And, and uh, there's many stories out there that uh, our knowledge keepers, our elders, uh, do uh, tend to share with our, with our youth and our people within the community who are interested in learning about the uh, prairie chicken dance. And in the Blackfoot uh, language, we say the Kittoki uh, Abaska. The unique features, uh, as I mentioned, uh, is the chicken dance bustle. Mm -hmm. um, the traditional bustles are mostly eagle feathers, but our bustles are round bustles, quite smaller than what the traditional dancers would wear. And also, they're also known as uh, the round bustle. Also, on the porcupine head roach, we also have the uh, what we wear, the pheasant uh, tail feathers, which uh, kind of represents the antennas of the prairie chicken, the ears of the prairie chicken as we dance about, and also the, the tights that mm -hmm. we also wear as a significant feature in our prairie chicken dance. The uh, chicken dance evolved, uh, well of course the Blackfoot way, uh, there's two styles, old style and contemporary style. Uh, the original style of the Blackfoot is the original style which is just dancing in, in one place just like the prairie chicken. Uh, today, a lot of First Nations other than the Blackfoot, you have the Cree, uh, the Kootenai people, uh, even the Dene people, just to name a few tribes out there, the Crow Indians, uh, some of them tend to have a liking to the prairie chicken dance, so they pick up that style. Uh, some of them come here to the four tribes of the Blackfoot Confederacy to learn that style, but uh, the Cree people also have a, a different interpretation, and, and when they dance, they move around quite a bit, uh, which is more of the contemporary style. But as in the Blackfoot way, the old style is dancing in one place and it's all basically in the shoulder movement and what we call the Blackfoot uh, toe tapper, which we kind of toe tap our, our, our feet to the drum beat of, of the song that is being uh, sung for us. And a lot of it uh, is actually has to do with the shoulder movement and, and the elbows when you mimic uh, the prairie chicken. And in the Blackfoot way of life, it was also the prairie chicken dance is also known as uh, is also known as a Blackfoot fancy dance. But when we talk about old style uh, with with the prairie chicken dance, uh, when you when you see the drum and you hear that drum beat, you may hear of a lower tone, kind of like hitting on a on a wood frame. It's like and that's the old style where they hit the uh, where the singers hit the rim of the drum with their uh, drumsticks and uh, that is considered old style then you know after the first second start in the songs there they would pick up that drum beat and they pick it up a lot faster and that's where the footwork really comes in when that drum beat becomes a lot faster and you add in the uh, the motion of the uh, shoulder work we also have another style what we call the uh, prairie chicken dance crow hop which is just a beat uh, similar to uh, almost like a double beat uh, but that beat is uh, sim uh, different than what we call the straight style where this one just more has a crow hop style to it and then uh, we also have the uh, prairie chicken dance shake where the shake song was hitting the drum uh, together and it sounds like uh, uh, like, like guns fire, it's like what I like to compare it to and what we do is we just mimic that dance like we just move our feet quite fast uh, look around because re the reality is like like the prairie chicken dance is a show off dance so as uh, as men as we're out there dancing we're, we're looking around like sometimes you kind of want to look around and say hey look at me I'm out here dancing I'm strutting my stuff you got to check me out and also when you go back to the original uh, prairie chickens like they're like when we got our dance. The reason why these uh, birds would dance the way they are, 
because it's a courtship dance. It's a, uh, you know, with recreation, procreation is considered sacred in First Nations uh, belief. And uh, of course, that nowadays it, it tends to turn a different way. But when you come back to, to the life of our people, it's a sacred life. And with the animals and the environment, everything comes together because in our Blackfoot way of life, we have a word that we call uh, the land. It's called Nidotsin. Nidotsin takes care of us. And what that really means is not just, just, just the land, but it's also the environment, the animals. We learn from them. And the prairie chicken too, is we, we learn from the uh, prairie chicken to the song and to the dance. And knowing that, you know, procreation is, is considered sacred in, in human life. And the prairie chicken kind of tends to remind us of that. Well, uh, the thing I always find is, is kids are really smart in, in our culture way. They watch and dance and kids can really pick up in the, uh, the different dance steps. And once you get it uh, started in the powwow circle, uh, depending on, you know, if you grew up in a traditional way, uh, sometimes you go through initiation and then you're allowed to go in there. But anybody that has the heart and the desire to want to dance, and to go out there and express yourself through through the dance, we uh, as individuals, as dancers, we we encourage that, especially with our youth. And sometimes, if kids can't afford to dance, sometimes I see people gift items towards kids that they start dancing. So uh, when when the when a youth starts to dance, it's the community that comes together and supports that, especially with the family support. So you know, it really comes down to you know mom and dad supporting that child making sure that he's there, making sure that he's being supportive. Because once you have that support from your family, man, you could go anywhere. And my kids are an example of that. Like mm -hmm. uh, my son Tristan danced in grass and he wanted to dance uh, chicken just like his old man, like his dad. And mom made an outfit together for him. And uh, like he went the same way I did, just sitting there and just watching, just watching and observing, picking that up, going home, practicing it, put on a CD. And uh, you just you just practice it, you get good at it, and uh, that's how that's how you know I would say one would get started into the uh, prairie chicken dance into the powwow circle. I'd like to uh, thank each and every one of you for watching uh, the prairie chicken dance contest here in the Six Guy Nation uh, powwow 2019. I hope you take this, and uh, you know I encourage it if you want to dance prairie chicken dance. I mean check it out; it's a favorite, it's the most popular dance out there. And I encourage you guys, you know, if you're, there's a pow out there, put it on your bucket list, man, because, I mean, it's, it's a great thing to see, and it's, a, it's an awesome memory, create, creating those memories. So I encourage you guys to get out there, check it out, check out the Prairie Chicken Dance. You will not be disappointed. Thank you, guys. Good night,